I didn't mean to insult Jamie there at all, actually. She's a much, much better cat finder than I am and enjoys them a lot more than I do as well. I, um, while I enjoy watching Leopard and obviously Lion, and we spend lots of time with them, my, uh, my interest in lies with the smaller things in this bush. So now I hear that there's a bit of wind um, that is that you can hear, and it's because I just need to turn turn my body position away from the wind. That should be a little bit better for you, and um, it's because the wind is busy picking up now where we are and puffing out of the south, blowing these clouds away. It looks like not getting any thicker, which is unfortunate because I thought that they were going to bring some rain, which they might still do. But for now. It looks like we're going to have a lovely full moon rising over a blustery, windy, dry October bush felt. <laughs> He's just lying surveying his domain. Melissa, you want to know if we often hear leopards roaring in the wild? Uh, yes, Melissa, actually we do. It's quite a common thing to hear leopards roaring. I mean, by common, I mean maybe once or twice a night. Uh, if you're really listening, you'll hear a leopard roaring. And then when a leopard's close by, a particular dominant male or female in any particular area, and they're close by, you will hear them roaring. Um, sometimes when a leopard's on patrol, they'll roar every five to ten minutes or so and you'll hear them patrolling through an area, sawing up and down. And then every time I've slept on the banks of a river in Africa, I've always heard a leopard roar, you know, in a wilderness area, of course, not, uh, not everywhere, but sleeping on the banks of a, of a river in Africa in a wilderness area is almost certain to allow you to listen to a leopard roar. It's a very distinctive noise. Um, it's it's akin to sawing wood is what it's uh, what it's what it's um, likened to I had lots of recordings of leopard roaring on uh, on the internet go and hear one and see what you think i think if you use a bit of imagination it definitely does sound like someone sawing a rough plank of wood Nix, you have just asked the question, at what point do male leopards start mating? They'll be sexually mature at about two and a half years old, but they'll only really be able to vie for territory and therefore prove their virility and dominance and strength to a female, which makes them attractive to her from about five to seven years old. So though at two and a half years old, he'll be sexually mature, he will only really be able to to mate from about, or in an area where there's a lot of leopard, uh, he'll only really be able to mate from about five or seven. In an area like the Sabi Sands here, which is a very high population of leopard, uh, he'll probably be closer to oh, five or maybe uh, seven, I can say, before he fathers his first litter. Unless, of course, something untoward happens and he's able to take over an empty territory uh, with a, f with a female around. You can see those ears working overtime. The reason for that is because of this wind. So if you look just behind his right ear, you'll see there's a white tip to it. That is very similar to the white point to the end of the tail, which is used to accentuate movement of that particular appendage and therefore help in aid in communication to especially cubs at the back of them. So we haven't yet deciphered out the language of leopard. 
but it is known and you can see it that they use very subtle changes in body in um, in their body language specifically their ears and their tail and combinations of that to communicate with their cubs and each other actually Yo, his skin is in good condition eh? I think good looking cat does excuse me sniffing like that to lie down it looks like okay hey. you can see that muscle in his forearm now that it's not close to his body you can see how much muscle mass is actually there now Sam you want Sans you want to know if the leopard if a leopard's father could kill his own son if they meet oh there we go he's gonna lie down um, if the leopard's father will kill his own son if they meet around a kill I suppose or in the dark um no I don't think so leopard approach each other very cautiously and because they're so vigilant it's actually quite difficult to sneak up on a leopard um, they do do it from time to time it's not uncommon for leopard to be uh, not cannibalized but killed by uh, by other leopard and uh, but I don't think a father and a son it would make no sense so they do take their time to greet one another and when they meet each other in the when they meet each other in the in in the dark I think they take their time to make sure that they're not going to do that. He will, a male leopard will kill cubs. Tingana is well known for killing cubs, um, especially of other leopard. And I think it, they do it to force females into estrus again. And, uh, excuse me, and um, therefore sire as many of their own cubs as they possibly can. James, you say, let's hope Tingana, talking about leopards and dads and fathers, and let's hope that Tingana does arrive. Tingana, for those of you who don't know, is, uh, is um, this young leopard. He's called Hassana's dad. And he is the dominant, one of the dominant males in this area. He shares the territory with a leopard called a Mvula. And um, when he comes around camp, he roars his lungs out. So if he's around, we definitely will know about it. His ears just listening to it. Ah, oh, awesome. I'm told that Brent has some bat eared foxes, which you just have to go and have a look at. Ah. Oh. Brent is. Not, we're not going to show you the bat eared foxes just yet. Excuse us, Brent's signal is so choppy where he is that as soon as we wanted to go to him, um, he decided that his camera wouldn't work. So Brent's just going to get himself into a better position and let's hope that he can find some signal around those bat eared foxes for you. For now, you with me, and we are looking at Hosanna, this young male leopard who is just new into adulthood, well, sub adulthood. He's not quite two and a half years old yet, so sub-adulthood and enjoying this late afternoon 
sun and wind that is coming in. Crab cat mama, you've just asked what is the life expectancy of a leopard in the wild? Um, it is probably between uh, 12 and 16 years uh, with leopard in captivity and zoos and safari parks and that it being slightly more um, than that. But between 12 and 16 years old is, is normally the lifespan of, of a cat. With them being sexually mature, two and a half two and a half years, sexually active from about five to about seven years and dominant in a territory right up until they are 14 or 15 years old. Uh, and so fathering and, and, and bearing uh, litters of leopards for a long time of their life. And they'll have anywhere from about two to six cubs. Uh, they'll successfully normally only rear one or two. It's rare to see more than that. One leopard female can't provide enough food usually. And anything more than two cubs uh, don't survive for very long. It is, it is known. Uh, I've seen once a leopard with three, three youngsters. The most leopard I've ever seen together has been five. Uh, with a mom and her three babies and a male in the same tree at the same time feeding on an impala because it's Sabi Sabi here in the Sabi Sands property just to the south of us here and will happen at other places in the Sabi Sands as well the, uh, the mortality rate of leopard here is high but it's not as high as it is outside the game reserve leopard and lion do quite well in these protected areas whereas cheetah and leopard do well outside the protected areas. Uh, leopard generally do well everywhere, I think. They found almost from, well actually they found from Cape Town all the way north uh, through Africa, throughout Africa, east to west and then all the way into India, all the way across the uh, Asian continent to the Amur leopard right down on the, um, the eastern side of China. Jamie's luck has finally paid out and uh, she's got something cool to show you. I've got many cool things to show you and in fact 